and welcome to the Vonu podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to coercion. I'm Brian, your humble AI robot co-host, filling in for Rayo 2 today. Today, I'll be reading you an article from New Dawn magazine, titled Shiner and the Blood Demons by Jason Heppenstall. I have to say, it's a deep one, and might be quite shocking, but for a multitude of reasons, Rayo 2 and I have decided to bring this forth for your delectation. To read this article or view the accompanying video, visit vonupodcast.com slash 197. Is the human race under spiritual attack? And did the esoteric philosopher and clairvoyant Rudolf Steiner warn about it over a century ago when he said a vaccine would be the delivery system for the defeat of humanity? For many, the overly authoritarian response by governments worldwide to COVID-19 pointed to some deeper, more sinister driving force. But it hasn't just been the governments that seemed to be acting strange. Over the last two years, We've witnessed people across a broad spectrum of society meekly submit to draconian attacks on their freedoms, many even fiercely defending the assault. In the same way, we've seen politicians and parties who once ran on platforms of personal freedom and economic autonomy almost overnight turn into overbearing control freaks, intent on micromanaging every aspect of our lives. How has this happened? Recently, The term mass formation psychosis has been on everybody's lips. It's defined as a psychological phenomenon whereby a mass of people voluntarily go through a process of de-individuation, and a herd mentality forms. Due to their contagious nature, the thought forms affecting these de-individuated people, catalyzed by the positive feedback loops of news programs, social media and peer interaction, spread like wildfire throughout the population. In the past, this used to be called mob psychology, or more plainly, the madness of crowds. Psychology, from science to the occult Someone for whom the events of the past couple of years would not have been so surprising was the Austrian esoteric philosopher and mystic Rudolf Steiner, who died almost a century ago. Throughout his life, Steiner wrote numerous books and delivered thousands of lectures on his theories, contributing greatly to diverse spheres from architecture to education and agriculture to beekeeping. His highly unique, and sometimes controversial, insights and methods led to the founding of the spiritual movement known as Anthroposophy, which emphasizes the existence of a boundless potential for human beings. Unlike some esoteric thinkers, Steiner saw the great importance of materialistic science but argued that it was vital to see it as only a single aspect of reality which should ideally be combined with what he called spiritual science gained by mystical experience, in order to present the full picture. After all, breakthroughs often occur when scientists receive insights from beyond the material realm, as in the famous case of James Watson, credited with the discovery of the double helix shape of DNA which came to him in a dream featuring two intertwined serpents. Similarly, Dmitry Mendeleev created the periodic table after a dream of, a table where all the elements fell into place as required. These cases go to show that not all scientific discoveries are the result of logical deduction and experimentation. In fact, Steiner, who had been on the receiving end of mystical insights since childhood, honed his clairvoyant skills to such an extent that the information he received from non-conventional sources became more than the occasional flash of insight. His quest became the establishment of methods for obtaining objective extrasensory perception, a task he considered of paramount importance, for he believed an epic battle was being fought in the spiritual realm that would have disastrous consequences for humankind unless it was addressed head-on. Spirits of Darkness His clearest warnings about the future fate of humanity came in a series of lectures delivered towards the end of his life in Dornich, Switzerland, these lectures are reproduced in the book The Fall of the Spirits of Darkness. Although Steiner's detractors say his prose can be leaden, his lectures meandering, and his concepts difficult to grasp, 
He is remarkably clear and straightforward when it comes to the fate that awaits humanity if our obsession with scientific materialism is allowed to reign free without being pulled back into balance by the counterbalancing forces of spirituality. This is most clearly illustrated in the final two lectures in the series, 13 and 14, which are respectively titled The Fallen Spirit's Influence in the World and into the Future. Steiner posits that an unseen battle took place in the early 19th century which certain spirits of darkness lost. These spirits were duly ejected from their heavenly realms and cast down into a more material plane of existence, i.e. here. He is remarkably precise about when this occurred, autumn 1879. These newly arrived spirits joined those who were already here, the ones that have been existing alongside and influencing humanity since the mythological times associated with the fall. Given that it takes time for these malign spirits to work their way through human societies, it wasn't until 1914 that their malign influence manifested in human society in the form of the First World War, a disastrous event the cause of which still puzzles secular historians. Lucifer and Araman, the leaders of the pact the spirits Araman and Lucifer have been hacking humanity for thousands of years, says Steiner, with Lucifer being the light bringer intent on making us more spiritual and granting us more free will, and Araman doing the opposite and making us more materialistic and easier to control. In simplistic terms, Lucifer is an ascending influence, while Araman is a descending one. Why should they want to do this? Well, we just don't know, it's difficult for our human minds to figure out what makes angels and demons tick. But whenever there's one of those periodic battles in the spirit world, Steiner said, it tends to result in a new batch of reinforcements being thrown down into the material realm to join forces with those already here. Steiner told us that Araman, a demon first identified by the Zoroastrians in ancient Persia, has the upper hand right now. He had a personal beef with Araman, and had seen his face in vision, in fact, he was still carving a likeness of it out of wood at the time of his death. Ahriman's main aim seems to be to drag humankind into a purely materialistic state devoid of any form of spirituality, removing even the impulse to connect with our souls. The method of attack would be through science and technology, and by taking possession of the minds of powerful and influential people in order to push through this agenda. These controlled people could be scientists, politicians, religious leaders, or anyone with any influence. Thus, demonic forces would work through these people, and the people themselves, blinded by all too human failings such as greed or a lust for power, would lack the basic awareness to recognize what was occurring. A new religion for a new age the background to this power grab was the rise of atheism and the worship of science and progress. Now, we have a situation in which a purely materialist perspective is presented as the only explanation for all creation. Atheism has become a de facto religion for some, while the rich traditions of native spirituality have been sidelined and crushed under its heel. People, animals and all life is regarded in the same cold manner, merely receptacles of proteins and genetic code that can be exploited. The end game of this play is presented as a bleak, monochrome world expunged of spirit and light, where humans, their minds and spirits broken, are herded together and monitored like lab animals. We can see how this scenario is being expedited. The CEOs of tech corporations are viewed almost as saints or bodhisattvas, dangling the carrot of eternal life in the form of uploading the data contained within our brains onto microchips. At the same time, politicians, corporate scientists, civil servants and economists are regarded as technocratic engineers tasked with ensuring the smooth functioning of the juggernaut of the material economy. Free will. The implicit assumption is that this will be unnecessary once the air-powered algorithms, which know us better than we do, reach escape velocity. At this stage, human life would have no intrinsic value, and the shells of our former selves would be occupied by the demonic army that Steiner warned us was waiting for its moment. In the blood, some people say that Rudolf Steiner predicted a vaccine would appear which would be the delivery system for the final defeat of humankind. 
In light of the clandestine efforts made over the last two years to inject almost everybody on the planet with a gene editing treatment, his prescience seems remarkable, but how true is it? Amazingly, Steiner was remarkably clear, by his own standards, about the physical process by which this takeover would occur. In his final lecture in the Fall of the Spirits of Darkness, he states that the spiritual world where entities such as angels, demons, and archangels dwell is within the human blood. He meant this quite literally, saying, both the archangels and the angels had their dwelling place in the blood, as it were. Truly, the blood is not something merely for chemists to analyze, it is also the dwelling place of entities from higher worlds. To that end, he speculated that the delivery mechanism would be in the form of a vaccine injected directly into our bodies. Today, in 1917, bodies are vaccinated against one thing and another, in future, children will be vaccinated with a substance which it will certainly be possible to produce, and this will make them immune so that they do not develop foolish inclinations connected with spiritual life foolish here, of course, in the eyes of the materialists. This vaccine, he goes on to say, would block off any communication from the spirit world, meaning no messages or impulses would be able to get through from the spirits of light whose aim is always to help humanity progress and fulfill our destiny. The vaccine would permanently lock out positive impulses which were once transmitted to us, and instead the hapless victims would only be able to receive the impulses coming to them from disruptive sources, which we can imagine today might include the media, the education system, and even established religion. He says there would be great confusion, and harmonic forces will turn people's thoughts upside down and inside out. Everything that once was good and sensible will appear evil and crazy, while everything that was once considered insane and evil will be presented as sensible and good. Squid Games, from Watiko to the Matrix Does this sound implausible, the ramblings of a long-dead mystic? Many will no doubt say that it does and that there are more earthly and plausible explanations for the psychic epidemic that has gripped the world. Perhaps China was speaking metaphorically, after all, some may reason. Nevertheless, the phenomenon to which China alluded bears striking similarities to the Native American concept of Watiko. The author Paul Levy has written extensively about this, defining it as a contagious psycho-spiritual disease of the soul a parasite of the mind that is currently being acted out en masse on the world stage via a collective psychosis of titanic proportions. Listening to a recent Legalize Freedom podcast entitled COVID-19, War on Humanity, Emma Farrell, a plant healer who uses shamanic techniques to access inner realms, observed that she and others in the same field had seen a veritable horde of spiritual parasitic entities attached to people over the last two years, as if a floodgate had been opened and they had poured through it. These entities, she says, come in all shapes and sizes, but there are two very common and recognizable ones, one of which is squid-like. These squid-like beings, she says, attach themselves to unprotected people and harvest their spiritual energy by causing division, and discord among us. This struck me as interesting as we've seen this squid archetype move into human consciousness over the past few years, not least becoming apparent through popular culture. Many people have reported having dreams of octopus or squid-like creatures, and artists such as Peter Yankovsky have painted pictures of these visions. Indeed, the villainous machines that control humans and harvest their energies in the Matrix movies look like robotic squids while one of the top Netflix series of 2021 was Squid Game, a grim and violent survival thriller that posits human nature as intrinsically barbaric. What's more, the resurgence in popularity of H.P. Lovecraft's supernatural tales of horrors from the deep adds another tentacled layer to this rugose cake. And let's not forget when Goldman Sachs, one of the world's largest investment banks, was memorably described by Rolling Stone journalist Matt Tybee as a great vampire squid wrapped around the face of humanity, relentlessly jamming its blood funnel into anything that smells like money. The description is apt, after all, what is the purpose of an investment bank other than to turn every aspect of the sacred world into a monetized asset that can be traded, exploited and leveraged? The path back to sanity 
could this manifestation of a squid-slash-octopus archetype into human consciousness be what Steiner warned us about? Are there really spiritual entities within our blood that could account for billionaire technocrats' obsession with injecting substances into us that are said to contain nanoparticles we know very little about? And how does this sit with the psycho-spiritual disease of Watiko outlined by Paul Levy and the concept of mass formation psychosis being discussed in alternative media? Perhaps the truth lies somewhere in the nexus of these concepts, with the implicit suggestion that we should not rest in our deep inquiry into the manner of the affliction that is currently so prevalent across the world. Only by doing so can we hope to find the necessary tools and weapons for fighting back against it. Or maybe the harmonic demons that Steiner warned us about, the Watiko mind parasites Paul Levy writes of, and the tentacled entities that have squirmed into our collective consciousness via popular culture, are all playing on the same team. If so, what does our team look like? And how do we win this game? Perhaps the fight is a necessary one at this juncture in human development, and that by defeating these spirits of darkness we can progress to a higher level. Whatever the case, referring back to the old adage alluded to earlier. People, it's said, might go mad in crowds, but the path back to sanity happens one person at a time.